I'm so grateful for your attention, for your willingness to listen to my ideas, but I don't want to be your guru. I want to talk about why that's so important today. A lot of teachers and coaches and mentors and speakers aspire to be the guru for their audience. And I get it. It's a very visceral drive, human drive, that comes from our evolution. Because thousands of years ago, when we were, you know, in the savanna, right, in tribes where we needed each other to survive, if you got rejected by your tribe, you would literally die in the wilderness. So it was a matter of life and death that you kept with your tribe, did not get rejected. And then even more, you also learned through evolution <laughs> that it's good to be a king or a queen because then you have the adoration of your followers and you get lots of food and benefits, right? So we have this human drive to be adored, to not be rejected. And so teachers and coaches and mentors sometimes forget that drive and then so they just are blindly trying to develop that kind of audience that will adore them, question them not one bit, not give them any critical feedback, and do everything that they say. Do you have a teacher like that? Do everything exactly as I tell you. Don't stray. If you're straying, even if you find a way that you think works better for you, you're wrong. My way works better for you. Be, be very careful of those kinds of teachers. And, and there's a reason why you should be There's two reasons. Or I, let me talk, to, talk about it from why it's bad for you as a student and why it's bad for you as a teacher, as an aspiring teacher. Okay? So the reason it's bad for the student is because your free will is the most important thing you have <laughs> as part of you, meaning your ability to solve problems by your own decisions and with your own conscience, your personal agency. And when a teacher says, just do my thing step by step without straying, don't think, just do what I tell you and whatever you find elsewhere is not as good as what I'm going to tell you. Be very careful because you are basically getting your free will stripped away from you, the most important thing you have. Okay? To be able to, to grow in solving problems and being creative and listening to your conscience and sharpening your conscience, that is the path of personal development. And so by following a teacher to the T, right, to, 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 to com with complete step-by-step, -step, ironically, you are straying from the path of personal growth. All right. But so, so everything you hear from your teachers, take it as an idea for your own experimentation. Experiment with it. Try, you know, yes, experiment with it faithfully because someone else has a lot of experience and they're giving you an idea for experimentation. See if it works for you. If it doesn't work, throw it away and try something else. Okay? Not that the teacher is wrong because the teacher only knows from their point of view. Right? The teacher has not lived your life even though the teacher has lots of experience, maybe with lots of students, but your life is by definition unique to you. Now, as you become a teacher, why is it dangerous to become a guru? Okay, and by the way, I'm not talking about religion. I, I respect your way to practice religion however you want. You may have a spiritual guru in your religion, and that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about business here. Becoming a business guru for your audience, whatever topic you, 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 you talk about. Why is it dangerous for you as a teacher to become a guru? Why? Because you stop learning when you become a guru. You, if you hate disagreements from your teacher or from your students and you are not open to their, their honest feedback and you ignore critical feedback, Okay, I'm not talking about trolls, people who just want to hurt you, that's different. But I'm talking about students who give you honest feedback in hopes that it will help you. If you don't take that in and, and wrestle with it, yes, it feels uncomfortable, but that's also an opportunity for you to grow, to welcome feelings of being uncomfortable. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. It really is. There's a value, there's a gift 
in that uncomfortable feeling. It's called the opportunity to grow. So that's why I'm, a, I'm obsessed about getting feedback from my clients and from my students. After every course, I ask them, please give me honest, even brutal feedback. If, you have, if you're in a rush, just give me brutal feedback. I don't want you to sugarcoat it because that's how I can grow, right? That's how I can learn. So as a teacher, you need to be super open to what your students are learning outside of their relationship to you, okay? And I hope that you're not asking them to only relate to you as a teacher. I mean, only have you as a teacher. I always encourage my students and my clients to say, great, please learn from other people. Don't let my own courses and my own programs be the only thing you have. Because otherwise, we're all in an echo chamber here. Please learn from other people too. Okay, that's why I always introduce other people, you know, in my, in my videos, uh, Instagram videos, not so much because it's hard to do it this way. But in my Facebook videos and my YouTube videos, I always recommend other people, right? So anyway, long story short, yes, we should passionately teach what we believe. Yes, we should help our clients step by step, into, but always to remember to balance confidence with humility. Yes, be authentically confident. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident, but I also know I need to work on my humility to say, hmm, where am I needing to grow? What is my, are my students or clients showing me? Anyway, uh, I hope this is helpful. My name is George Cow, Authentic Business Coach. Um, I hope you benefit from this, and more importantly, I hope you're learning from others as well. So anyway, hope to see you in another video, and thank you again for joining me.